Hey, what's going on everyone? This is Yo Shirley back with another video and today we're going to be doing some crunch offlane and that's because with the PlayStation launch on Predator so right around the corner I thought I'd give you guys my recommended pit hero for those who are joining Predator for the first time and I'm looking for a specific offlane that's um, really good to kind of start off with and before I even jump into that by the way you should start with Q first I kind of have a bad habit of just getting all my abilities whenever I'm like getting into games so I accidentally got my right click and set my Q right here so definitely do not do that but on that note, um, the big reason why I'm recommending Crunch is because there's a lot of other heroes like Greystone and Grux that are like actually pretty solid too. But I think the big difference between like the, um, the three of them is that I think Crunch is just a more better consistent pick. For like Greystone, he actually kind of um, loses out a little bit against like the um, Grux and the Crunch for example. And so it's kind of like um, Greystone is a really easy character to play but um, it's just like he kind of loses to these other popular pick is one um, issue, right? Another thing is like for Grux, he's actually very lane dominant. The issue with Grux though I found is that he teaches bad habits in the sense that um, the stuff you kind of do with Grux, you don't typically do with other heroes, right? So for you to actually um, uh, play Grux, it can help you in, in the short term, but in the long term it teaches you bad habits that I'm not a big fan of you trying to like learn and all that kind of good stuff right for, for crunch i really think uh, he's a really solid um hero to just start off with because like um, he's just a really flexible all-around good hero he's also just very good at the moment as well he, like kind of like one of the top um bruiser off lanes he's just very good in the duels he just wins the one we want especially hard um once you get to like six especially so in this matchup, we actually um, a little disadvantage against like let's say the Scrux right here. But once we hit six, we're gonna start to be in a lot better position. And I need to stop this my CS as well. And there we go. We got the big reason why we we're able to win that outright is because we had the lower advantage. When it comes to offlane, lower advantage, especially early on, are huge because that's when you have a ability advantage. That's when um, your stats really matter a lot. Because every time you are leveling up, you gain a lot of stats um, with that, right? So um, when you get like um, additional stats early on, it's just it, it's a bigger difference than let's say level seventeen versus eighteen, right? Because at that point, everyone's getting full build. Everyone has a ton of stats from items. So when you're very item dis deficient, um, that's when uh, um, getting those stats from like growth from levels are like much, much more important right there. So the build I'm going um, for t today is kind of like what's considered to be one of the more better builds um, for Crunch, and that's just going for augmentation first. Um, for those who's just starting off for the first time, you don't typically you don't have to worry too much about building the best items. Like the re this recommended build is actually really good. It's just when you get when you get to like higher elos, then it becomes a little bit more fine tuning in the sense that you want to try to min max your builds and all that stuff. So that's what I'm trying to do right here. But just to let you guys know that you can totally go the recommend build, no problem at all. So I'm actually feeling pretty good in, th in this matchup because um, it's just for the fact that I'm actually a pretty safe laner. Like, Quanch has always been just a very good safe laner because it's on B, it's very good at just disengaging but also engaging on really aggressively. So, so a couple of times that I used my on B to just get right on top of the work and be able to start to go ham on him. And sometimes I will just hold on to it if I feel like there's a steel nearby, for example, and I need to like play a little bit more on the safer side. Again, I got a level 5 right there. Oh wow, he went from right there. Interesting. I'm backing off because obviously the Dexter still, still trying to hover the Grux, but um, Crunch is very good at just getting quick trades like that. One of the kind of main trademarks of just like Crunch is that he's very good at doing quick damage. And, he t and he's really just teaches you good, good habits of just like playing around your abilities because um, playing around your abilities is very key in off lane. You don't want to like hold down left click and just kind of walk at your opponent because um, you, a lot of time you put at yourself a disadvantage when you mess up the wave and when you just overextend and get punished for that, right? For Crunch, I can easily just do all my combo right there and just immediately back off and it's just a lot of damage that um, I'll be able to get off without getting too punished for it.
So we got level 6. This one we saw that actually really, really pop off by the way. And so we really wanted to try to um, take advantage for this fact because we are two levels up on this um, Grex right here. And see what I mean? We literally just do so much damage to this um, Grex into just that one combo. So like, I just, every time I see like a small window, you just want to take that and try to do a bunch of damage. And yeah, I know the save right there. But honestly, it doesn't kill me, except now there's a guinea right there, but we sidestep that, and now we're backing off right here. So Steel is definitely giving us a lot of love. He's just trying to give his, um, Grug some help and trying to deal with us, but, um... There's only so much this, um, guy can do before he just starts to, like, help him too much, and then the jungler's gonna put himself behind, because he's putting so much resources into showing this dial, but he's not killing us at all. I do notice that the Grux right here is actually being Kane and Guard, which is actually not bad considering that he's actually already pretty far behind on me. So he kind of he's looking to play more defensively in the sense that he wants to try and actually scale a bit better, like trying to survive the lane phase a bit more and catch up and farm. The issue with that is like he's not gonna really do that much damage at all. So if anything, he's he's now gonna put himself pretty far behind because now we can just bully him a whole lot and and not have to worry about him doing too much damage back to us in return. He has level 6, so now I'm trying to take shorter trades because um, his level 6 is actually pretty dang good for stealing physical power and just all in on us. This is where it becomes important to take shorter trades and not like push up too, too hard. But obviously, if we're really far ahead to the point that we can just walk up like this, then we can just kill no problem, right? Because we always have HP, I just need to go in, do my full combo, and then all of a sudden he's just very dead right there. So that's kind of how you want to play into this, um, uh, what you call, this Grux matchup in general. It's like, um, his biggest weakness is CC of course, but also just burst damage. If you can burst him down before he can stack a bunch of bleed on you, you're actually kind of chilling. And the steel is hovering us a lot, but he's only level 5 with 2 lows up on him while our jungler is actually kind of even so so with him. But so far, my frame mouse is to do much more than this um, steel right here. Uh, just because he just keeps trying to gank me, whereas my frame mouse just focuses elsewhere because you always see us dominate pretty hard on our side. There's no need to really go kill the Grooks when I can do that on my own and he can focus more mid and the dual lane right there. I really wish I had a little bit more good for augmentation because that would be a huge power spike but um, I didn't want to sit in base too long without doing anything so we just like maybe look to take an early reset after we get a good time to back. I messed up the CS right there. Actually not too sure where the Grex is at. So instead of me shoving this in all the way, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to be looking to um, hold this freeze right here because what, what that means is that essentially instead of me constantly shove the wave into him, I'm going to try my best to hold the wave as close um, to this lane as we can because when we do that, um, essentially what that happens is that the Grux is going to be a lot more overextended than I am. He's going to be a lot safer to farm, whereas he's going to be more riskier to step up, especially with his low immobility right here. So. Um, if we try to keep this way close to a tower, why is the steel just, he's just walking in because he wants a teal buff. So I guess this is a steel that won't let us ever get teal buff. I can like, if I really want to, I can just live, but I decide I'm just gonna send it and just get the 1v1 kill anyways, because like, th it's getting a little bit annoying with the steel just constantly just in my lane like that, especially like getting my teal buff every time, so I'm just gonna ego a little bit, get the kill on the um, works, and I give a little bit of shutdown, but that's all fine and good, because I'm not too worried about me getting a small shutdown early, I'd rather like give it now than later when I get like a 6-0 shutdown to someone, if that makes sense. 
because it doesn't show on the scoreboard but when you get a bunch of kills and no deaths you start to get a higher gold bounty on you so when they kill you they get a lot more gold than let's say someone c one c if that makes sense I got mutation, so now we're gonna really just pop up. I'm pretty hard right here, so we know Grux just uses ultimate uh, against us. So I'm gonna be looking to just abuse that in the sense that like we don't know why by him using this alt, and we look to re-engage him pretty soon. But that's why I'm getting aggressive with shoving this lane in already because I want to pressure this tower a bit more. I don't see Grux anywhere. I'm I'm just gonna like keep pushing the tower, and if he comes by, then I back off. Because if I can get the T1 tower knocked down, I'll be able to actually start to rotate um, pretty easily or look to just invade the um, west side jungle. Which is what my fame is doing right now because we have the lane push up, we have a big advantage on um, going into this lane, so he can definitely do that um, without worry. And that's a, a bling, so that's very good. Gank by the fame mod, still in the jungle, and then also just getting the blink out for us right there. So no all means that next time we go on him, he's just gonna be super super formable. So he's actually gonna back right now. So we're gonna put this in instantly because uh, we want to shove this in and maybe focus the tower. We just don't know the works and just focus tower. I don't think there's enough damage, especially since he didn't manage damage item first. And there we go, that was just a very simple cleanup um, with the combination of me and Fame Mouth just going ham right there. So actually, I'll shove in one more wave just because I want to get a little bit more gold. Then I'll look to kind of back off right here. T Pop is now up. Um, the, the, the camps doesn't like refresh until you actually walk over them. So even though the T Pop is full right there, it's still like um, not what you call. It's still like on cooldown. I have to actually walk over, which I'll show right here. That's why not. So right here, there's no camp, and then now the main map will actually update. So if I 25 seconds, that means if I run back here to left right away, I can actually make it on time to grab this um steel buff right here. I'm gonna go um Draconum right here. So again, like if you're new to the game, don't worry too much on the items itself. Just been recommended because they're all really, really good. So I would um for me I'm going to Draconum because it has physical armor, which is quite quite nice against the um Grux because I take a lot less damage when I have physical armor being built against him right here. And we actually see the Grooks um, doing his west side clear because he obviously can't stay in lane so he's gonna take his jungler's farm to try and catch back up. Which will help him kind of stay relevant but he's also stealing resources from his own jungler so his jungler is not gonna have the west side to clear as much as the issue. And, and like I said earlier since we got that um, T1 tower knocked down, we can actually look to kind of steal camps right here and put the steel even further behind right here. And yeah, yeah there's a um, steel that's kind of seen right there. I'm gonna see if I can count gank this by just seeing right here and see if the steel is ever gonna walk up. Which is not, we're actually gonna push this M because um, objectives really matter a lot. So I'm trying to knock down towers left and right. We can keep opening up the map more and more to make more plays. Because everyone's all on the right side besides the Grux, by the looks of it. So, um, he's actually over there, funny enough. I don't think I do enough to take down this tower, but I'll definitely chunk it a little bit. And since they're on the right side, I can actually go for web buff and take it fast enough before they can even contest me on this. Yep, we got no farm at all. A lot of people are saying mid, so we can look mid. I'm gonna try to grab this great buff right here so I have the mana to fight this out. I did that really early. 
because like I was trying to blink and then use my empower E right there. By the way, I don't think the jungle do enough damage. Oh, nice hook. Because like um, what you can do is like um, you saw that I have my empower E. What I can try to do to catch people off guard is I can like blink forward and E immediately because if someone if the conscious arm beats in, you can kind of see that coming and react to it. But if you are actually what you call, I'm actually gonna go on broken right here. But if you just blink forward instantly, that's really hard for like the enemies to react to. So I was trying to do that, but sometimes like um your abilities come out a little bit faster than your blink. So I did that fall and eat like just too fast. Is what I'm trying to say. So right now, I'm trying to make the call to do main farm because uh, we have the left lane shove in, so we have the fire to do the ejective. Also, we're just really, really strong right now. And that's kind of like how you can just easily do ejective, is when you have this huge lead on like your opponents. And Fame, I was making the really good call to give it to me because um, if you can give it to your off laner, they can split push with this buff very, very effectively well. And even if a lot of people come in, they can you can kind of just 1v2, 1v3, depending on the hero especially. So I don't see anyone on this side, so I can actually get pretty aggressive. I'm gonna back up because I didn't land my ability, so I wanted to take it a little bit slow, shrug him out slowly but surely, and put the get the pressure on this side. And we see steel right there. I don't really care because I should be able to take this um five cam really fast. So let's do that and now I'm just gonna back off slowly because obviously there's a steel right there. And Grox is actually one year away, so we don't have to worry about um them trying to one two be one us. Grox is over here now, but um we just back off slowly because Steel might just honestly come back over here again. But she is coming over here. Trying to tower dive us, but um, it's not gonna go quite good for them because now we, we're like in the safe net of the tower, and that's what I exactly mean by it's conscious just a kind of good safe laner. Because I was able to on BL, even they went back on me, I can get in power E, knock them up, and they just keep they try really hard to lock us down and just uh, unsuccessful to do so right there. Finally, got our quest online, we're actually gonna go race it back right here. Again, this is more like a kind of tech option in this matchup. Um, against the Grux, Razorback is just really strong because Grux trying to hold down LMB. You park your, park your Razorback and all of a sudden you're reflecting a lot of damage back and also me gain a lot of damage in the same time. Effectively, we're just um, countering his ultimate more than anything. We still have main point for 15 seconds, so actually well, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna actually rotate over here because I don't think I can do nearly enough to take down that left tower. Instead, I'm gonna try and see if we can maybe hover mid a little bit, maybe put some more pressure on the mid lane. Also hover for the fainter's objective, which um, since we're so strong, it'd be really beneficial if we actually heal for this fight with the team, just to ensure that nothing goes wrong for our team. And Bellica, it looks like she's gonna get caught out. She's gonna distract them long enough for us to take this objective. And if they try to still force in, then we can just turn, right? So, we got the objective. We don't have to fight this, even though we could probably win if we really want to. King is going way over there. I'm not sure if I'm staying under a wall or not. Brooks is hovering here, by the way. I'm trying to see if the Gideon is ever gonna. Okay, it looks like the Gideon is over here. I'm actually gonna try and get out by just going over here. But I'm, I'm not gonna be able to get out because we have three people trying so hard to just um, get us right here.
I think we actually get out, maybe. I'm gonna get this way just in case. And we actually do get out here, ladies and gents. Again, the big, big strength of Crunch is he is actually so elusive. If you can saw out long enough to get your combo, like your on and double dash, like double dash on is just honestly so disgusting because you close distances or get away, like almost guaranteed with that just alone right there. The very good showcase of just Crunch just being able to get away with um stuff as long as you have to build just like that. And it's kind of like what, I'm, and that's kind of like the biggest difference that sets apart against like the Grux and Greystone. It's like they don't have the mobility, especially the Grux. So like Grux is very dominant and easier to play, but he's a lot easier to punish, and it just doesn't build good habits to play heal that um people will like eventually be able to count you pretty easily as people get more experience playing against the um scary Rhino, right? And it's actually going to be the FF right there. They didn't seem too keen on the fact that um, three of them chase us down. We killed one and four of them were just not enough to actually kill us right there as you guys saw. So I think that was a pretty dang good showcase on just how to play the crunch and all things. Because definitely I goof up a little bit by going on B first because that's just a bad habit I have whenever I'm going testing this game. I kind of level up all my abilities and kind of go and test this stuff, right? But... Um, that kind of almost cost me the lane because not going your Q first makes your level 1 chain pounds pretty weak as you guys saw when I was not able to have that ability to help out a whole lot. Um, but we make, we are able to actually um, still make do with that right there by being able to just use our on B to actually catch the Grux surprise when he was in that way. We actually did a decent amount of damage right there and going on B seconds is actually pretty fireball so it's, it's just we had to play that level 1 pretty safe right there. But yeah, I really think that like out of the, all the off lanes right here, I think Crunch is still going to be really, really up there in terms of like who you want to be playing in this lane because like I think the other recommendation I can give you is heal. It really depends on the kind of heal you want to do. Um, for this heal, I recommend that what's going to be like the my most recommended dominant offline hero and that's um, crunch for like new beginners people trying to get into the game whereas if you're someone that wants to play more of a very safe tank offlane then i would say steel is your probably your best bet so i think crunch and steel are very two good picks you can solve to learn the game with and of course um that's just my recommendation don't let my recommendation to tell you if you really want to play the Rhino right here or any these like offlaners right here because um i just want to like give you guys my personal recommendation of a hero that's going to last you a long time like gross will eventually fall off it's the issue great song would just kind of it's not an easy hero to play into crunch and Grux who are just very very strong right so I just try my best to show you guys some good gameplay on how exactly Crunch can just really dominate the lane and, and get away with a lot of stuff that these offlaners are not able to do as well but anyways um console is just right around the corner so I'm really excited for all you console joining so really enjoy the game so I really appreciate you guys stopping by and watch my video definitely I'll be covering all the new builds because there's a bunch of new items that's on the way that's going to be really spicy to cook up some new builds um, for all these different heroes but and of course playing Iggy and Scorch who is the next um, mid lane hero right here so thank you again for supporting the videos as always and I'll see you guys in the console launcher predator peace